class, we are going to see the various characteristics of embedded system. Okay, let us see it one by one. The first characteristic is application and domain specific. First, let us see what is a general purpose system. So the best example of a general purpose system is your personal computer. So with your personal computer, you can hear songs, you can see videos, you can edit, you can browse, and you can do even more things. Whereas, now let us consider an application-specific system. With an application-specific system, you can do only that application. For example, in your ATM, you can either deposit money or withdraw money. You cannot do anything else. Will you get chocolates in your ATM machine? Definitely no. Will your ATM wash your clothes? Definitely no. So your ATM machine is an application specific system. Okay, so all embedded systems are application specific. To be even more appropriate, now let us consider you have an oven, you have an AC. The control unit of your oven cannot be used as the control unit for your AC. Your oven has a separate control unit. Your AC has a separate control unit, which means your oven is used for cooking. Your AC is used for cooling. That is why it is called as application specific. The next is domain specific. Now let us consider you have an embedded system for the telecom industry, okay? And you have an embedded system for the consumer electronics. So your consumer electronics, or your refrigerator, your AC, your washing machine, and many such things. Similarly, the control unit used in your telecom industry cannot be used as the control unit for your consumer electronics. That is why it is called as domain specific. So what do you understand from this? All your embedded systems are application specific and domain specific. Clear? Now let us move on to the next characteristic. So the second characteristic we are going to see is reactive and real time. Okay, so embedded system is a real time system. Why is embedded system called as a real time system? Because it works with real time inputs. Now let us take examples. Okay, we are talking about reactive now. So your fire alarm, what will your fire alarm do? If there is fire, your fire alarm will start shouting. And in some cases, it will also splash water. Okay, so now here, the occurrence of fire is the input. Your fire is the input. Okay, your fire is the input. Fine. Now, will fire occur, occur periodically? No, this is unpredicted. Okay, this is unpredicted. Now let us take the second example. You have your automatic street lights. So what will these automatic street lights do? When it is dark, it will turn on the lights and when it is bright, the lights will be turned off. Okay, but this is a kind of periodic system. Periodically, this happens. Okay, fine. So two types of systems we have. One, it is unpredicted. Okay, the other one is peri periodic. Fine. This should be reactive. So immediately if there is a fire, your system should start working. It should not miss, okay? So what is the meaning of reactive? It should produce output in response to the change in input, okay? It must produce output in response to change in input is called as reactive, okay? The next one is real time. What is real time? A real time system is called as a deterministic system. So what is deterministic here? Now look at this example. You're going in a car, suddenly you meet with an accident. What happens? The air balloon opens, okay? So the air balloon which is opening here should happen immediately. So if there is an accident, the air balloon should open immediately. It cannot open after 10 minutes. Okay, it should open immediately. Such a system is called as deterministic system. Okay, not all systems are deterministic. The third characteristic is it operates, it should operate in 
harsh environment. Okay, so this should operate in conditions where it is dusty, where there is high temperature. It should operate in places where there are vibrations, where there are shocks. Okay, all these conditions it must withstand. Now let us consider a weapon firing system. And if an embedded system is used in weapon firing system, the embedded system must withstand a lot of heat. Okay, so you must select the components in such a way that the components should withstand heat. The components should withstand heat. So this is one of the important characteristics of embedded system. Okay, so now when you select components which withstand heat, definitely the cost would be high. Okay, so when it works in harsh environment, naturally the cost will also become high. The first characteristic is Embedded system is a distributed system. So what is the meaning of distributed system? Distributed system means it is a part of a larger system. Okay, it is a part of a larger system. Okay, now let's take, you go to Pizza Hut, you have a pizza. Okay, after you have your pizza, you give your card to pay them the bill. So what happens? the card is put into the card holder, okay? So immediately what happens? Your card reader will read the card. So now this card reader is a system, okay? This card reader is a system. Now what happens? The control automatically goes to the bank, okay? Now there is a system in the bank and this system will take care of reducing the money from the card. Fine. Now, again, there should be a link between the cardholders issuing bank and the merchants acquiring bank. Again, this is a system. Okay. So you just go swipe your card. The money is detected. But in, inside of that, you have a lot of systems embedded in. Okay. So your embedded system is a part of a larger system. Okay. Now I can tell you another example. You have your ATM machine. Okay. You go put your card into the ATM machine. Your card reader is an embedded system. Fine. Immediately what happens? The number is read. Yes. Then the control goes to your bank. Your bank server is on. Fine. That is again a system. Fine. The, from that system, the money is detected and you get back the money to the dispenser. Okay. So distributed system means embedded system is a part of a larger system. Okay. Now let us consider the other characteristics, small size and weight. So this is one of the important things. Whenever you buy a product, the product aesthetics plays an important role. Okay, so now you let's take you, you are planning to buy a mobile phone. Okay, fine. So I have given you an example, two types of mobile phone you have. So what type of product will you choose? Will you choose a sleeky one or will you choose a bulky one? Yes, nowadays we choose products which are very sleeky because those are easy to handle, okay? And naturally, we also choose products such that the weight must be less, okay? So product aesthetics include small size and weight which are easy from the consumer point of view to handle, okay? So this is an important characteristic. The last one, which is very important, is your power concern. Okay, so now what is this power concern? For the best example for this is your pacemaker, which is an embedded system, which is placed in your heart. So what will this pacemaker do? This pacemaker will generate pulses, which will make, which will help your heart to work properly. Okay, so this pacemaker is placed inside your heart. Okay. So how do they place this pacemaker? They do an open heart surgery and they place this pacemaker inside the heart. Okay, now your pacemaker keeps working. So how should the pacemaker be? The battery should be should live long or the battery, you, you have the facility to change the battery throughout. 
No. Since you're opening, oh, it's an open heart surgery, you cannot replace this pacemaker for constant duration. Okay. The pacemaker should be in such a way that it consumes less power. Fine. It consumes less power. Why it should consume less power? Only if it consumes less power, the battery life will be more. Okay. Only if it consumes less power, the battery life will be more. So this power concern is an important factor in embedded system, especially when it comes to systems like your pacemaker, where the power consumption should be less, only then the battery life will be more. Okay, so these are some of the most important, there are many characteristics, but these six are some of the most important characteristics of embedded system. Okay, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Thank you.